When I first started in my career, nobody ever sat me down and went over exactly how much money they made and talked through how they were thinking about it. Advice about income is always given in general, but the most valuable bits come from specifics, and when it comes to income, nobody's really sharing. It's taboo in our society, but it shouldn't be. So in the next 30 seconds, I'll disclose the exact amount of money I made in 2021, how I'm trending in 2022, and how I earned it, but most importantly, how I think about it. I do understand that the economy isn't going so well right now, and that these details may upset people and breed resentment towards me. This is you, and seeing my income details is not helpful. Please navigate away. The last thing I want to do is upset people. Okay, my adjusted gross income for 2021 was $1,030,401, and here's the proof. Welcome to A Life Engineered, where we take an engineering approach to your life and career. My name is Steve Meta, your overachieving cousin that your parents always compare you to, or, hey mister, you forgot your card, and I'm an L7 principal engineer. On this channel, I give you all of the advice information I wish I had when I was coming up in my career, and it will always be free. This is my gift to you. I hesitated for quite a while about whether to make this video at all. Honestly, it's scary. But I think it'll be really useful to folks, especially with the economy as it is at the time of this filming in late 2022. So here we are. But if things go off the rails, I'll delist it, simple as that. First things first, I'm not defined by my job or how much I make, and neither are you. Having more money means you can consume more and rarer things. Nobody is defined by their consumption. It doesn't impress me, who you are, and your deeds do. Are you creating things, expressing yourself, or making the world a better place? Are you an interesting person? Do you stand for something? Can you tell a good story and a funny joke? Do you make people feel better? That impresses me. There are going to be two reactions to my income. First, there will be the people that make more than me or a question why I don't make more money given my role and level. Compensation at my current company is heavily stock-based and largely depends on market conditions. Some years I do really well and outperform other companies. Other years it looks like I got a demotion. If you make more money than me, good for you. Truly happy for you. If you still think that I could be doing better after watching this video, let me know in the comments section below. We can talk about it. Comparison is the thief of joy. It's all too easy to question your existence because of other successes. But your net worth is not a stand-in for your personal worth. I'm not going to feel worse because others are doing better. Success isn't a zero-sum game. The other reaction will be utter disbelief regarding how much money I make. I'm not sharing to flex, but to give you actual numbers and to give my mental model on how I think about my income. This is useful if you want to have a similar career trajectory as me, a software engineer in the US. But this income is not guaranteed. The market could completely tank, it could get laid off, the world could change fundamentally. When things change, they change really fast. That's why, along with my numbers, I'll also let you know how I'm thinking about writing out the choppiness. That's the important bit of this video. Sorry to let you down, ladies, but I'm taken. The tax return from earlier is a joint tax return, so household income that's inclusive of my wife's and my own. Our income can be broken down into two broad categories, wage income, or W-2 income in the US, and non-wage income, or investment income. Then, Uncle Sam takes his cut, which leaves us with what we take home. Let's start with non-wage income. We made $355,139 in 2021 in this category. This is a slice of income where we don't directly trade our time for money. I'd like this portion of income to grow over time, but it doesn't need to happen immediately. I'm willing to invest in it over the long term to see a big jump in the future. Case in point, my YouTube channel took in $289.48 in 2021 on 101,900 views. In 2022, as of today, income is $8,542.89 on 1,983,413 views, which represents a nearly 30 times growth in revenue and 20 times growth in views. These are top line revenue numbers. I still haven't made a profit on YouTube if you factor how much I've spent by a long shot. In fact, if you factor in the hundreds of hours of time, YouTube has been a gigantic loss for me. If you know my channel at all, I often say your undivided attention is the most precious currency in the universe, and I'm plowing a lot of it into YouTube. If you'd like to support the channel and help keep sponsors away from the content, take a look at my Patreon page. I understand the optics of asking for support while also disclosing a large income, but if I could, I would spend most of my time creating high value content and giving it away for free on the internet. The more support I get, the more content I can justify the creation of. But if you can't afford to support me, that's totally fine. My content will always be free for everybody. There just might be less of it, or you might see a sponsor placement here or there. My strategy is to create as much informative and engaging content as I possibly can, and what I do make from content creation, I plow right back into making more and better content, and the world becomes a better place for it. 
I look at YouTube as a place where I can invest and that many people, not just me, can profit from. So I can't quite quit my day job yet. But if the channel 20Xs again next year, well, then we'd be cooking. Taking a long-term view on all this and I'm committed to this investment and I'm committed to you, my viewers. Outside of YouTube, I made $354,850 on non-wage income. The largest portion of this, $331,107, came from my investments in cryptocurrencies. This is another example of a long-term investment. You can knock crypto all you want, but it's been really good for me over the years. I started investing in 2015, mostly in Bitcoin and Ethereum, and some smaller coins. Crypto gains usually come from selling and not from hodling. In 2021, I started divesting in Bitcoin and I put more into Ethereum since the network doesn't require as much electricity. This is so much better for the planet long term, but don't come at me, Bitcoin bros. I'm not anti-Bitcoin. I still have some, just not as much as before. To round out the other non-wage income, $5,837 came from dividends and $18,155 came from capital gains on non-crypto investments, mostly appreciation from stock grants. There were also a ton of smaller line items that won't be of interest to you at all, but that I mentioned so that the portion of my viewers checking my numbers don't go off on me. Okay, this year, 2022, has been a terrible year for the economy. The broad market is down 20%, with tech stocks down 40%, and crypto completely tanking. If you're watching this in the future, you'll know whether this is just the beginning of the pain or whether we're at the end of it. I'll likely take a large loss for 2022, though likely not as large as my 2021 gain. This underscores a couple of points. One, your investment strategy needs to be longitudinal. You want to make an investment so that the payoff is years later. Time in the market is better than timing the market. A focus on maximizing your investments within a particular year will undermine your long-term prospects. Which leads to two, when you experience losses, you shouldn't panic sell all of your investments. I'll take an investment loss this year, but I'm not selling everything and my world is not crumbling, at least not yet. I brought it up in a different video, but I sold my long-term investments in 2007-2008, which will affect my net worth by more than a million dollars by the time I retire. It's okay to be a bit cash heavy now, but don't liquidate everything, especially if there's a penalty for doing so. And three, most importantly, when you have a good year and receive a windfall, you should not substantially increase your lifestyle. If I had bought a fancy boat last year, this year's losses would really sting, and I'd have a floating money hole. More on lifestyle inflation in a bit. Let's talk about wage income. Along with my wife, our W-2 income is $675,262. Let's start with my wife's contribution. She made $139,728 in 2021. She's a senior software engineer, engineering manager. She quit her job as a manager early in 2021 at a medium-sized company and joined a startup later in the year as a senior developer. So this wage represents a partial year of work. Like all startups, she took a pay cut when she joined in exchange for getting on the ground floor. I won't go too much into detail since this channel isn't about her, but the takeaway is that your partner really matters. It matters a lot. Not only would we not have eclipsed a million in income without her, but we are aligned on values, financial and otherwise. If you're single, make sure to align on finances before committing to a long-term relationship like marriage. It's just as important as considerations like faith and spirituality or having children. Finding an awesome partner that compliments you is worth more than money. My wife is my partner in crime and my best friend, and I love her dearly. If you're not single, and I probably don't need to tell you this, but you have what you have in a partner, barring a big change like divorce. I don't have any advice for you there. Sorry. My salary last year was $535,533. My base wage in 2021 was 160,000 and RSUs or restricted stock units, basically stock grants as salary was 375,533. My compensation is really tied to the performance of the stock price. Last year, that wasn't so bad. This year, it's bad. I'm on track to make about $100,000 less this year. On top of investment losses for 2022, we might make 25 or even 50% less than last year. This smarts a bit, but my world isn't crashing down. First, part of working at my company is stock-based compensation. Every year can't be a windfall year. The expectation is that some years aren't gonna be as good as other years. When my annual performance review occurs, I will expect the company to make up the difference. This sets me up for future good years. Because I'm looking at a longer time horizon than a single year, I know this will equalize over time because it's happened before, to me. I'll adjust the numbers in the following example to compensate for a recent 20 to one split. On October of 2007, the stock price was $7.55, and by December of 2008, the price tumbled to $2.10. 
My compensation was adjusted for the next year to account for the nearly 75% drop in value. I didn't know it at the time, but the RSU grants in 2008 set me up to have an unbelievable amount of income when the economy did make a recovery. The stock price went up 500% in the next three years and 5,000% in the next 10 years. While I'm not expecting anywhere near the same amount of growth after this recession, nobody knows what the future is. My point is that if your time horizon is longer than a year or two and you don't need the money immediately to survive, long-term focus smooths out all of the bumps in the road. And sometimes, like in my situation, the Great Recession actually facilitated an enormous windfall in upcoming years. There's some whiplash for sure. I sold some things at the absolute bottom because of course I did, but the high highs only came because of the low lows. Second, I'm really lucky to have a job where I'm well compensated, even in down years, and really, really well in good years. I have a good work-life balance, despite what you hear from unhappy former employees, and work around some of the smartest people I know. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Last year, when the tech sector was growing like gangbusters, I thought to myself, should I go work for Meta, Coinbase, or Stripe and get hundreds and thousands more? It may be different if I was in a different phase in my career, but at this point, I'm unlikely to increase my chances of major promotion by moving companies. And there's a non-zero chance that my quality of life would go down if I moved. So at least for me, as long as my compensation is in line with the industry or better over time, I'm good. I'm not gonna grind myself into a fine dust and completely sell out for a little bit more. I'd rather spend my spare cycles making YouTube videos. And finally, and this may be the most important part, these swings in income don't change my quality of life at all. If in good years I bought a supercar, an unnecessarily large and flashy house in the nicest part of town, flew private, bought a boat or blingy jewelry, I'd be screwed in down years. I've been very, very wary of the hedonistic treadmill, which is the tendency for humans to acclimate quickly to nicer and nicer things and expand their lifestyle. I'm not saying you need to be a stoic minimalist that doesn't have any nice things, but if you do expand your lifestyle, you should do it at a reasonable pace. For us, we have a reasonable house and a car and food on our table. I can spend on some of my hobbies and get the nicer version of things, but everything is not my hobby. If I made half as much or double my income, my life would be nearly identical. I have enough to survive and time to spend with my family and friends. Everything past our living expenses is saved and invested so I can retire faster. If I make a lot, then I don't have to work as long. If I make less, then I'll work until I'm older. Either way, my day-to-day -day life is the same and my day-to-day -day life is awesome. Let's talk about taxes. We're in the highest tax bracket in the US. It's a graduated system, so not all of my income is taxed at that rate. I paid Uncle Sam $322,474 in taxes, which brings my effective tax rate to around 36.1%. Washington state has no state income tax, so after taxes, we netted $707,927. If we lived in Silicon Valley, our W-2 income would be higher to account for higher cost of living and state income taxes. But then we'd have to live in Silicon Valley. We were both raised in the Pacific Northwest and its home. We thought about moving, but we're not staying because we're trying to minimize our tax liability or anything. It'd be really easy to start ranting about taxes since $320,000 buys a lot of nice things. But if I lived somewhere else, I wouldn't have the opportunities that I have in the US, so I'm not gonna complain. I don't waste effort on minimizing my taxes or messing around with geographical arbitrage. If we lived elsewhere, I'd think my strategy would be to find a remote position that paid West Coast salaries. But if I couldn't, my strategy would be the same. I'd maximize my earnings where I was, save what I could, invest in the long term, and retire faster. And that's how we got over a million in 2021, and we're weathering the storm for 2022. I wouldn't make the same exact choices as me. If my advice makes sense to you, then take it. If it doesn't make sense to you, don't. My ideas are free for everybody. Applying it to you and your life is the hard part, and I can't do that for you. That was a lot, but here are the takeaways. One, make money decisions based on the long term. A year or two isn't long term, 20 to 50 years is. When the market is bad, don't panic sell. When the market is hot, don't get FOMO and panic buy. When you have a good year, save for the bad years. Two, don't inflate your lifestyle too quickly, do it slowly. You can get the nicer version of things for your hobbies, but everything shouldn't be your hobby. Three, you need to be aligned on financial values with your partner, just like you need to be aligned with things like children and religion. Having a partner that compliments you is priceless and you can lose way more than half with a messy divorce. Finally, after taxes and living expenses, invest in the long term. This can take the form of investing in yourself or your partner, like going to school, real estate, crypto, stocks, or safer investments, it doesn't matter. This way, you can retire or have financial independence earlier. I'm still looking for people to mentor or coach on the channel. 
If you want to be that lucky person or learn how to find an awesome mentor, you have to watch this video. You can also find my latest video here. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.